So in this episode, we'll be covering the replacement of a serial ATA hard drive as opposed to an IDE hard drive. We do have a video that covers that as well. Um, we'll be working on this uh, ProLiant ML110. It's actually a server, but uh, pretty much desktop form factor is going to be the, pretty much the same thing that you would find in any standard uh, household type desktop computer. Um, and uh, it'll be lots of fun, so uh, let's get going. So now we're going to take it apart. And to do that, you unplug everything. This is the kind of cable you shouldn't have. And it's all chewed up and worn out. So that's beside the point. And to take apart most cases, you either have a couple screws, maybe a couple thumb screws. In this case, we only have one that's already undone. Panels generally on most computers will slide off just like that. All right, so now we need to determine what type of hard drive we have. Is it IDE or is it serial ATA? The way you can tell is the actual type of connection that's inside going into the hard drive itself. This is an IDE drive and you can tell by it has 80 pins here. This is the IDE cable that goes with it. So if you had this type of cable, they also have rounded cables, which we can't seem to get our hands on at the moment. But a rounded cable is the same thing, it's just the cable itself is kind of put together in a rounded shield, but it still has the same 80 pin connector on here, just like this. It is keyed, so you can only put it in one way, and you'll see there's a slot right here. Can you see that? Oh, I'm trying to get in on it. This slot and this tab on this connector only allows it to be plugged in one way, just like that. Same way on the motherboard side. Right. But, as you can see, inside this machine is a serial ATA drive. And you can tell it's serial ATA by the type of connector you have in here, which is like this. It also has serial ATA power which is slightly different than an IDE drive. The IDE has a slightly larger 4-pin power connector here. Molex power is what they call it. Mol Molex. <laughs> All right. Sounds like some kind of drug or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, we're not actually going to be replacing this hard drive. We're going to be adding one. So let's put this thing back together. These are also keyed, so they only go in one way. Lost it. There it is. You don't want to force too hard on these things because if you start forcing, they are very fragile and they will break. So take your time with it. All right. So what we need now is another hard drive to put in this machine. So now we're going to put another type of drive in here, which is the same as what's already in here, a serial ATA drive, and you'll see that it has the power connector here, and it also has your. Uh, your data connection here. Why don't you show them the top of the drive a little bit and show them how you generally will tell them the size information things like that. I've got it on Yeah there. and depending on the manufacturer of the drive it will have information on the top to tell you how large it is, who made it, how fast it is and uh, this is a 160 gig drive. It's 7200 RPM serial ATA. So that tells you right there that it is the right drive. The RPMs is pretty much how fast data can be transferred from the disk, the faster it spins, the better it is. So if you are buying a replacement drive, you need to get the fastest one that you can possibly afford. 7200 though is standard standard and acceptable all around. Most desktops will have a 7200 RPM yeah, hard drive. Like you can get 10,000 RPM drives, but they cost way more and they're not really worth it. So the other question is how do we put the sucker in here? And that all depends on the actual manufacturer of the case. So in this one, it looks as though I have no idea how to do this, dude. <laughs> Those uh, on this particular model, the actual front of the entire case will pop off. off. Yes, there's little tabs. And that's what these tabs I'll are in. right here with the arrows. Right. Pointing, telling you, hey, dummy. Push, push in those little tabs. This is how you take the front off. And you'll actually find this to be the case on many, many, many proprietary cases. When I say proprietary, this means branded computers. Anything from e-machines to, uh, you know, HP, IBM, I have to tell Dell. you those crackballs? 
uh, on this particular model, it does have a shield this on there. This is nonsense. So, and again, you'll you'll encounter different, a little bit different scenario on each different model, but the general premise is almost always the same. Uh, on some custom-built computers, you will find that uh, you can put the drive in directly from the back without having to take the front panel off. But uh, HP is well known for machines where the front panel has to come off in order to put a drive in or take one out. And to take it a step further, you'll notice that it's using Torx head screws, which are not Phillips, not flathead, but a star shape, like such. And Why? HP, well, H that. HP Compact, both are always going to use a 10 millimeter Torx. Um, that is their standard standard size Torx bit. So, let's take the front cover off. Front cover. Why did I call it the front cover? Yeah, some people will call this a drive cage. And it's not actually a cage, it's more of a shield. Yeah, it's in this case it's actually because HP has an extra bay option, which we don't have. Alright, now, you may be wondering, how do we put a new hard drive in here? That's a good question. That's what all these extra screws are for. And right here you'll see a picture. It says hard drive 1234 and a whole bunch of little screws all that right there. Just letting you know those hard drive those screws are for a new hard drive. So let's grab a couple of those screws out of here. Four to be exact, right? Now HP is really nice about this. Uh, some of the other manufacturers do not provide extra screws, so um, oftentimes a new retail hard drive will come with these types of screws. Um, the threading on it is often referred to, to referred to as a standard case screw, so any standard case screw will fit when mounting a hard drive. Alright, so now we have our four screws. Here's our serial ATA drive. We're now going to put the screws into the drive. You might have to refer to the other hard drive that's mounted in there in order to figure out which holes these screws need to go to if you, because, because if you look at the side of the hard drive you'll see that there are actually three holes for screws so depending on your manufacturer they may want those actual screws to go in different holes well depending on the machine that's the way Chris does it the way I do it is I put it in there and if it doesn't fit I try again <laughs> now you can put this drive anywhere you want you've got three other drive spots where you can put it here three empty bays and we can put it where we want it so it doesn't really matter but you want to put it to where you can still reach the cables when you get it inside because the cables have to go from here to connect to it so you want to you don't want to really put it at the top if you don't have to just to make it easier to actually get to the front of it once you get it installed so we'll put it at the bottom here you got the rear going in first don't make the mistake that we've all made at some point and try to put it in backwards and if you were listening, you heard it click. It's now in place, locked in. This and model you see has how I did trial and error, and it actually fit. This model has plenty of space between the actual hard drives, uh, allowing for cooling. Hard drives will get very hot during operation, so if you've got uh, two hard drives that are going to mount close together, not allowing much air, and there's space to go up with the hard drive, you might want to mount it one space above, just to allow adequate ventilation. And I'm going to attempt to put this back on. All right, now, we now have the hard drive installed. All we have to do is put power onto it and apply the actual serial ATA cable. Now, most hard drives will not come with a serial ATA cable that I've seen. Am I wrong? Uh, retail ones may come with a serial ATA cable. May come cable. with one. That's, but that is important when you do purchase a hard drive. Make sure that you check that it does come with a serial ATA cable. Or if you purchase an IDE cable, make sure it does come with an IDE cable. Right. And if, you're ordering again, if you purchase an IDE drive, make sure it comes with an IDE cable. And if you're ordering a new egg special, there's a good chance it's not going to come with a cable. Yes. Now, are we going to use this cable? That's fine. Rock it. All right. If you had a question about which one to plug in, which one is the power, you can see from the other hard drive that says on the actual connector, serial ATA. And if you are also confused, you could just look and find the other one inside your computer coming from the power supply that looks like the one that's already plugged in. 
So we'll put that one back on. And actually, this is how it was plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and put this one up on top just because of the way the cable is bent. Right, it'll put less stress on the cable to have it mount this way that now. Way it looks nicer, it's easier to get to, and it's not twisted. Right, the power is power. It really doesn't matter which one goes to which hard drive. And in fact, if you look closely, you can see that actually that is just a splitter installed by HP, by the way, coming off a standard Molex connector. So, not all computers like that. Some will come straight from the power supply. All right, so now we have power. Now all we need to do is actually hook up your serial ATA cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a serial ATA connector on the motherboard somewhere. And you will see right here is where the first hard drive that was already in there was plugged in. Is my hand in the way? No. If you can kind of see in there with a flashlight or something, you will see that it's numbered. This one says serial ATA 1. It's not a bad idea to just go ahead and put the next one on serial ATA 2. And if you kind of dig around and look on the motherboard, you will see that right here it actually says serial ATA2 on that connector. So, all right, now once again, I just fumbled around trying to get the sucker installed. I was looking at this cable, seeing how it was plugged in like such. So I was trying to follow the same pattern that they already had. However, these are keyed also. You cannot put it in backwards. So once I realized I was having problems putting it in, I looked at the actual interface on here, and it is keyed to where it has to go in backwards. Not really backwards, but opposite Different from of the how other the other one, one is. All right. But now it's plugged in. Now we've got our other end of our cable here, which is also keyed, and we're going to put it on the power. And this time I'm going to check first before I put it on. And that is it. Now I'm just going to take the cable and kind of jam it up in this little cable manager right here just to keep it from flopping around and flying into a fan or something. That's it. It's and now installed. All we have to do is put the case back on, the front cover. And if everything goes as planned, when we turn it back on, uh, Windows will recognize there's a new hard drive there and we'll be able to format it and start using it right away. Alright, so first things first, now the computer's back on, we're going to see if we can find the drive. We're going to right click on the computer, go to Explorer. I'm sure you know another way of getting to the Windows Explorer, but I always like to just right click, go to Explorer. Anyway, we're going to look, and these are the same drives we had before. Our C drive and our D drive. D drive being the DVD. Of course, there's nothing in there, and no other drive. Now, we know the drive is in there, we saw it when we booted up reason why it's not showing up is it's not properly initialized to work with Windows yet. So the way you go configure it to actually work with your computer is you go Management by going to right click on my computer and go to Manage. In the Computer Management Console you will see a Disk Management link right here. When you click on it, we'll make this bigger so you can see, you will see our new 160 gig drive we installed and it says that it's online, but it's unallocated. All we have to do now is right click on the unallocated space, make a new partition. The Windows New Partition Wizard starts. It's fairly simple. All you have to do is tell it that you want to create a new primary partition with the maximum amount of space allowed. And we're going to assign whatever drive letter you want. For now, E is fine. We'll click Next. We'll let it format it as NTFS. And just to save some time, we'll perform a quick format. Hit finish, and it is almost done. There it is. It's it formatting. That is there, yeah. And it is now done. It's showing that it has a 160 gig drive available, and it's healthy, and it's set as drive letter E. Actually, hold on just for a second. If you look real close, you'll actually see that it says 149.05. That's not something wrong with your hard drive. Um, believe me, manufacturers are probably really tired of hearing about how that number is smaller than what it's advertised. When a hard drive is formatted, uh, for various um, reasons more technical than we'll get into in this video, um, you actually will lose a little bit of usable space on a hard drive. So it's actually going to, when it shows here and it's formatted, it's going to show us a little bit smaller than what the box said on it. So now we're going to close computer management because we're all done. We're going to go back to the Windows Exploder. And like I said, I like to right click and go to Explore, bring it up, and guess what? We now have a new volume. It is drive E, and, and it's blank. There. We can now take 
things and store it on there. There's our new hard drive.